there's an entire class of 2D maps, of Poincaré maps, that arise in forced 2D ordinary differential equations. Let's say forced oscillators, things like that. These are very interesting maps that often exhibit chaos. To set this up, I want you to recall what we did with forced oscillators way back in volume two. We foreshadowed this stuff. We were looking at, say, nonlinear oscillators, some nonlinear second order ODE. And instead of setting that right hand side equal to zero, what you can do is force it set it equal to some, let's say, sinusoidal function, some time periodic function with some amplitude. This is kind of like what we did with the bouncing ball problem, where we have that base, that table, being periodically forced. The example that we're going to look at here that I want to recall to mind is the forced duffing equation. Remember back in volume two, when we looked at the duffing equation, this was given by the second derivative of x with respect to time plus some constant delta times dx dt minus x plus x cubed. Now, when we set that right hand side equal to zero, then depending on the value of delta, we either add just one equilibrium or we had three equilibria. Okay, that's fine. But what we're going to do now is set the right hand side equal to something of the form a cosine omega t. We're going to force the system or shake it. Now, these types of forced oscillators are very physical and can be very chaotic. Indeed, in the case of a forced duffing oscillator, we can really think of this as modeling a physical system where we have a mass suspended between two springs that are somewhat in compression so that they can buckle to the left or to the right. And that periodic forcing can be thought of as shaking the entire system. And what that shaking does is it tends to push you over to one equilibrium or to the other equilibrium with that saddle in the middle, providing a source of instability. Now, if you were to simulate this system, either physically or through the forced differential equation, then what you would see is behavior that sometimes seems to be periodic, but has some erratic features to it. And if you were to plot out, let's say, x, this displacement, as a function of time t, then what you would see, both in simulations and in physical experiments, would be behavior that is not periodic, that is not, of course, settling down to an equilibrium. It's not random. This is, like everything else that we've been looking at in this volume, an example of a chaotic dynamical system where it is difficult to predict what is happening over time. Now, this is a really great example of a very general phenomenon. We can take a forced Vanderpoel oscillator. We can take a forced pendulum. We can take all kinds of forced oscillator systems and get chaotic dynamics from them. Now, what are we going to do with that? Well, we can think of this entire thing as a three-dimensional continuous time system, converting that ODE, as usual, via dx dt equals y, dy dt equals minus delta y, plus x minus x cubed, plus that forcing a cosine omega t. Now, that t variable we can add as a third variable in our system. But how does t change? Well, dt dt is just one. Time evolves, independent of everything else. Now, this does create for us a three-dimensional continuous time system because of the sinusoidal nature of that forcing. The time variable, t, can be thought of as a circular variable, as a variable in the circle, S1. So we really have dynamics on the plane, R2, X and Y, times the circle, S1. Very interesting. And we can use that time periodicity to define a Poincaré 
section. This is a reduction to a two-dimensional discrete time map in the x and y variables. And this is very simple. We just sample the time once per period. So instead of solving for x of t and y of t in this continuous time system, we do so but then discretize to xn and yn where the continuous time variable is related to the discrete time variable n via t equals 2 pi n over omega. And the result of this is a two-dimensional map. Now this is a little bit difficult to describe in words, so let's draw a picture of what is happening in the full three-dimensional space where you have x and y restricted to some disk and time is evolving in a circular manner. It's spinning out something like a solid donut. And what we're doing is we're integrating forward in time. We're keeping track of x and y as a function of time, but then we're sampling it once every period. And this is the Poincaré section that induces a two-dimensional mapping on those x and y variables. We pick a point in there, we look at the solution in time that passes through that point, and the next time you hit this section, boom, that is the image of your point. And so a single initial condition gives rise to an orbit over time that bounces around in this plane, in this Poincaré section. So to summarize, we have a Poincaré map, or a Poincaré first return map, that in this case goes from the plane to itself, that takes x and y at time n to x and y at time n plus 1. And for a chaotic forced oscillator, these maps have some really interesting patterns. Now it's a little bit difficult to see with just a single orbit like we plotted before. So let's take that force stuffing equation and let's look at something a little different. Let's take an entire collection of initial conditions and let's say color them with some colors and then let them all go at once. Just launch all of those initial conditions in the plane and watch what the dynamics does to the entire ensemble. And what you see is that that collection of points is getting stretched and folded and bent around and then boom, when it comes back and hits that first return map, that is what your Poincaré map is doing to the entire region. That's just one iteration of the map where you're integrating over one period of the oscillation of that forced oscillator. But then you do it again, and then you keep going, and you keep going. And every time, what you're seeing here are these classic hallmarks of chaos, where you stretch things out, and then you fold them over. And this stretching and folding and stretching and folding is what's giving rise to this very, very complicated behavior. Now, you could see why this duffing system really is chaotic at these parameter values. And what's interesting is to note the similarities between this forced oscillator that we're seeing here and its Poincaré map and some of the other maps that we have looked at. Things arising from the bouncing ball, things arising from the Hainault map, totally different systems but with very similar behaviors in the resultant chaotic 2D maps.